So, welcome back folks to another episode of MLM Back to Basics and this time we're going to be talking about paint stripping a bit of an un unholy civil war which I'll explain in a moment however, my first tip after we've tapped our body and uh, inserted our screw is to get yourself two or three of these plastic boxes that you can get from pretty much any discount store. The reason why is I'm going to put all the rest of the parts in here. If like me and some of my other friends, you've got two or three projects on the go, parts can soon get lost. So, a little project box. So let's put that to one side. And we're left with our body. Now I've started to lay out what you can call the tools of the trade on this one. And uh, the desk soon got pretty cluttered. So, there are three types of solution, as far as I'm concerned, to removing paint. The first is to take another one of these plastic boxes get yourself a brand of paint stripper and uh, if the top of the bottle is wide enough you can get yourself a pair of forceps and dunk it in to said bottle put it into your plastic box and seal it up and leave it now that can take an indeterminate amount of time it can take 30 minutes it can take an hour it can take overnight and this is where my civil war reference comes in I've had this ongoing battle between paint stripper or paint, paint and varnish stripper and caustic soda why? well I'll tell you for why sometimes you can put your body or your part you want to strip the paint off into your caustic soda jar and here's the infamous caustic soda jar that a lot of uh, my friends use it's a well-known uh, sausage <laughs> sausage holder. <laughs> okay, yeah, hot dog holder. That's the word I was looking for, not sausage holder. Um, the reason why people are using these are they're very sturdy. I've used a um, another jar like this, and it cracked and smashed. So, I highly recommend you looking for this particular type of hot dog jar. I'm not going to advertise the company uh, because they won't appreciate what we're using these jars for, I imagine. However, so moving on to caustic soda, as I've referenced it, what you would do is to put your body into a caustic soda jar and I use one of these uh, medicine measuring cups and then I'll fill it to the top the said caustic soda once we've boiled our kettle cover our model with hot water and gently put in our caustic soda now at that point a must thing to be doing is when you're using any of these products you need plenty of ventilation if you're working over the top of the product you need a mask and you need a glove 
or a pair of gloves. Um, PPE in this instance is a must have. Um, these products are all chemical based and can do nasty things. Burns, you know, um, you can get it on your chest and it's not pleasant. So even on this um, varnish stripper, it says wash hands thoroughly after use. If inhaled, remove person to fresh air and keep comfortable for breathing. If swallowed, call a doctor or NHS 111. I think it goes without saying. You don't leave these chemicals lying about. I have grandchildren and I don't want anywhere near these products. So I keep them in a... I've got a steel wardrobe and I keep that locked up. So, boiling water, a cup full of caustic soda, tip it in gently, bit at a time. If you go the whole hog, the boiling water will bubble up over the jar and you'll be in a bit of a mess. Window open, PPE. Then, as I've said in a lot of my videos, I usually come back about 30 minutes later, check on the progress, and if I think it's cleaned enough, I'll take it out, um, rinse it with cold water before handling, and um, hopefully it's done the job. So we'll do a demo of the caustic soda a little bit later, and we'll see how this model reacts to it. However, you will come across that model that will not work in caustic soda. And what I mean by that is it will not get all the paint off. So then you will probably have to either A, give it another dunking in caustic soda, or B, move on to paint stripper. And that is where my battle sometimes lies. Um, I can usually now determine through experience which models are going to cause me problems, paint stripping wise, and which models I know will work with either one product or the other. So I did mention that there are three solutions that I've come across. The third solution, and I'm going to use this Corgi Toys Whiz Wheels John Player Special F1 Scale 136th. Well, I'm not going to dismantle it. What I will point out are these gold plastic parts. So they've been covered with a gold lacquer. So there's part there's the seat, part of the axles, and you may be able to just make out the engine and exhaust parts are also plastic gold chromed. Now, in a previous video, looking back, I kind of recommended putting these parts into a container and covering it in bleach. And it does work. I'll, I'll, I'll stick by that. It does work. But it can take an absolute age. And then uh, through gaining knowledge and uh, looking at other guys' videos, we came across oven cleaner. So you would put your chromed, your gold chrome plastic parts into a plastic container, spray it with oven cleaner and you can pretty much stand there if you've got nothing better to do and watch the paint peel off and disappear um, my recommendation leave it for about 30 minutes come back check on its progress and uh, just leave it until it's it's cleared off and it does a hell of a job I was amazed um, and all these products apart from nitromals are all readily available at a fairly cheap price. I mean, I'm getting caustic soda for £2.30. Mr. Muscle, less than a couple of quid, I would imagine. 
Um, and even the uh, paint stripper, I think, is under a fiver. The Nitromores I find to be quite expensive. Um, other things to be aware of. Get yourself an old brush. I'm using an old toothbrush in this case. For cleaning off the um, parts after you've rinsed them. Whichever method you've used. You know, you're know, going to have to clean them off. And usually a, a, a stiff pl plastic brush like this is, is a useful aid. If you're using paint stripper use one brush really and um, keep it separate from every other brush that you use because um, it'll get some um, this is starting to lose its bristles I mean paint brushes are not made for dipping in paint stripper really but um, when the devil dries you know and needs must it's an ideal tool uh, what else? Yeah, I think that about covers it. So, you've got paint stripper, you've got caustic soda, you've got oven cleaner for doing the same job, really. Basically cleaning paint off parts. Whichever method you use, rinse well with cold water. Don't handle your parts. That sounds wrong. Don't, answer, don't handle your model parts until you've cleaned them and rinsed them with cold water. Make sure you're wearing some protective gloves, a face mask if you're just starting to start in the process, so you're not inhaling fumes. Keep the stuff away from kids. That is absolutely vital. Um, and these three processes or these three solutions are my. Uh, what I involve, what's involved in my uh, model making or restorations other guys may have um, other solutions my mate Paul at Pimp My Diecast has added some additional information on his channel so visit Pimp My Diecast with um, further information on taps and he's given a great, great explanation about taps and what they're used for in engineering so we'll move on to the next section and we'll look at doing a demo of using caustic soda. So I'll catch you in a few. Cheers. So welcome back to the lab folks and here we are with our body of our Bagheera. We're going to put it into our caustic soda jar. We're then going to add some boiling water, about a third of a jar. I've already opened the window for ventilation and wearing a black glove. And now we're just going to gently add our caustic soda. As you can see it's bubbling away. This is why you don't add too much in any one go. And then I uh, <clears throat> end up just rinsing out the uh, little cup that I use. With some cold water. All the time I'm still wearing my uh, black rubber glove as added protection. And then I'll usually leave this for about 30 minutes and come back and check on the progress. You can see it's bubbling away there. Um, already the water's changing colour. A bit of a swirl. Put it back. Leave it. And then uh, we'll catch you back at the bench. Alrighty then. We are back from the lab and our trip to the caustic soda jar, and uh, let's see what we uh, let's have a look what the result was. 
I'll just put it into this uh, paper towel to dry it. And in this case, we've got 100% paint removal. The caustic soda does have this effect of leaving this uh, residue and uh, dulling the casting. There we go. Result for the caustic soda. And in episode three, we'll be looking looking at um, cleaning and prepping, ready for paint. So I'll catch you in the next episode. Cheers. <laughs>